And she looked at me and she went, oh, if I knew you were going to be here, I would have brought my black friend with me. So welcome back. Um, I hope you lot, first off, are doing well. Um, we have a special guest. I wonder who that special guest is. Are they coming? Uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, this is Michael. Michael is my husband. And I thought I would do a video for you guys on how we met because it's the one question that I've actually always been asked throughout the years, years now. I'm being asked like, randomly like yeah how'd you guys meet how'd you guys meet sorry this chair is creaking okay so all right so i'm just gonna get stuck in i'm gonna tell you the story of how we met how do i start to tell you how we met we met in a very unusual way and if you guys have any questions um about the two of us in terms of our relationship actually no don't ask i don't think we'll get it <laughs> I don't want you to ask me. I tell you what, here's a better question. If there is a story on how you met your, your other half, whether it's your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your, just your significant other, husband, whatever, wife, um, just leave it in the comments below because I'd love to hear your story as well. All right. Um, so I met Karen through email. Um, I happened to work for a video game company here in the States. Um, so randomly, an email appeared in my mailbox and it was asking everybody to get together to go out for a night out and someone from the UK don't I didn't know she was from the UK but someone responded and said oh that's not fair you guys are going out I can't join you guys you know I'm, I'm stuck in the office in London see this is where she says no this is not how it happened but that's okay we're gonna get there. <laughs> so my story goes, is that I responded to her and I said, don't worry, we'll have, I'll have the, the concord come and pick you up, you know, airplane, and we'll put some champagne and, you know, flowers on ice, and then you can flowers on ice, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I was like, we'll have some champagne and we'll go for you. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is how we met. Michael has got the gist right, the overall gist is correct. Uh, we met by pure accident, and I do mean keyword accident, yes. on email. We did not know each other at all. I did not know what he looked like. He didn't know what didn't know what I looked like. I was in London at the time. Michael uh, was in America, where New he York. still is. Yeah, still is here. I was in London, and I was sitting at my desk, and I got an email, and it was one of those spam emails. You know when you get those emails where it's um, to a group of people, and your name is included. And it, it was one of those. And normally, and I didn't know who the sender was, nor any of the people on the email. Now, normally I just hit delete, but for some reason I, and I, I just, I've always said this, for some reason I chose to reply back to this person I don't know, and I hit reply all. So everyone was copied on my reply. And I wrote, thank you for the, inv this is literally, I remember this, thank you for the invitation, but I live in, London and it was the email was um, an invitation to the opening of a nightclub a new nightclub in New York that's what I wrote now I had no idea first off how did this person get my email address because I don't know who that person was and the only thing I can think of is that my mate Paula I've mentioned Paula before my channel um, we used to come to New York on girl trips like shopping trips we'd come for like a long weekend in New York we'd stay at a cheap hotel and we'd go around the city running around buying like uh, American brands because they cost so much less there here than they do in London so I figured that maybe on one of those trips I must have left my email with somebody up to now I don't know who so that was what I was thinking so I wrote that I wrote thank you for the invitation but I live in London and I hit send all right I thought nothing of it went back to doing whatever I was doing. About 10 minutes later, five, 10 minutes later, I got an email from somebody from that thread. Direct. Yeah, but this time was from someone called Mad Mike. That was his name, Mad Mike. I don't know who that could have been. Um, and it wasn't like with everyone else on copy. Mad Mike just replied to me only. And I thought, oh God, what have I started? You know, cause you don't know who you're talking to, do you? Um, and I wrote, he wrote, Oh, I'll send you. A, I'll send you a plane ticket to pick you up. And I thought, oh my gosh! Now again, don't forget, I don't know who this person is. And I didn't know who she was. It was just strictly a fun response email. That's all. It was. So yeah, so he emailed me back. 
And then don't forget, I don't know who this person is. I'll send you a plane ticket to pick you up. I'm thinking, oh God, who is this? What have I started, right? This is a complete stranger. Now, again, normally I hit delete because I don't know who this person is, right? And normally, wouldn't you hit delete? Comment below. Wouldn't you normally, at this point, hit delete? Because you don't know who this is. I probably would have. I probably would have too. It's, I've never done that and I'd never done it before. So it was a very strange thing for me to do. So I replied back to Mad Mike as a joke. Don't forget, I don't know who this person is. And I wrote, um, make sure there's champagne on board. Yes. As a joke. And I hit send. Again. I, I sent her a plane ticket with champagne, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't. This is where people in person, they go, no. Yeah, so I hit send and I thought nothing of it, right? I never thought I'd hear from him again after I wrote that, whoever this person is. And then literally a couple of minutes later, he replied back. And I thought, oh my God. So I, you know, I looked to see what he wrote. And don't forget, nobody else has copied on these emails. It's just the two of us. So he wrote, um, this time it was a much more normal email. He wrote, hi, my name is Michael. Um, by the way, I have no idea how I got on this email thread, uh, more, more like normal. And um, I, re I replied back and I wrote, hi, same for me. I don't know, you know, my, my name's Karen. I don't know anyone in this thread. I don't know who the sender is. Um, I live in London. And it literally from there, it snowballed into a conversation and that's how we met. All right, the end. Bye! Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a I told you her like. story's better. And um, I have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye! <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, so... It, it was a great story, though. It really is, because I, I have to admit, like, how random is that, that we would strike up a conversation with each other and not knowing, still, even... You know, at that time, not knowing who that person was. Yeah. And that carried on for days. Yeah. It wasn't something that was just like a one-off for like an hour and it's kind of like, okay, sweep it under the rug kind of thing. It was, I don't know how or why, but like the next day, we emailed each other back. Yeah, we actually... And we just started chatting. Yeah, yeah. And still not knowing... Who we were. Like, I didn't know who he was. All I know is his name is Michael. Mad like, Mike. Mad Mike. <laughs> Uh, my name was normal, just Karen. Um, but again, I didn't know who he was. Uh, he didn't know who I was. All I knew was he lived in New York. I lived in London. And um, I, there was no romance. There was no romantic no. feeling like, oh my God, is this, have I found a boyfriend? You know, there was, I was single at, the, at that time. And, but it didn't even matter. The point was, I didn't know who this, I didn't know who this was. And I had no romantic uh, thinking about this email at whatsoever. I just thought this guy's quite funny. That literally, that's as far as it and went. And I thought the same because we were having emails back and forth, and I guess there was a lot of humor in the email because I don't really remember all of the emails. Okay, I don't remember any of them, but <laughs> <laughs> I do remember one thing that stood out was that she had a great sense of humor, and there was just something about the way she just. She had fun with the fact that I was having fun with the email and it just literally led into more emails back and forth. Yeah. Just kind of getting to know each other, but literally on the surface. Not yeah, like... just like a friend sort of thing. I almost felt like I found a, a friend-ish or someone who made me... I felt that I, I randomly found a guy who made me laugh. I think that was really what it was and I thought it was quite funny. It wasn't annoying. It wasn't like every day I would log into my computer and get an email from him and it wasn't a feeling of, oh God, here he is again. You know, oh, how am I going to, I've got to block this person. You know, I, I wasn't, what? Yeah, you did probably go, oh God, him again. No, I didn't. I never, <laughs> I never did. I mean, you can't lie to yourself, but I never did. I never felt like, oh God, here we are. another email from this person. I wish I never replied back to, or whatever. Um, I just thought, oh God, what's he got to say now? And I would click to see. And it was literally just like, I, I felt like I found a friend online. And it was as simple as that. And his name was yeah. Mad Mike, or his name was Michael. And that's how it was for quite a while, actually. Yeah, it was like that for months. We just, it was just like a, an email thing. And it wasn't an email relationship. It was just an email, uh, like, it a, was, like a random friendship. Like I just, you know, found someone who was funny. Yeah. And he lived in New York. And I didn't know what he looked like or who he was or anything. I didn't know what he did for a living, you know. But it was just yeah. fun, because that was how we honestly met. Okay, so weeks passed. And then um, eventually he wrote this email. He wrote, do you know what? We talk to each other every day, but we have no idea what we sound like. 
Yep. And I said, what's your phone number? No, no, I did. So I, he see, wrote, see, see the story goes. no, because, no, because you asked that question, but I'm the one that called you. No, I called you because after you said, you know, you, we speak every day and we have no idea what we sound like. So I immediately replied to that and I said, what's your phone number? Because I instantly thought I'm going to call him. So he, so you reply, he did, he replied with his phone number. And, um, I literally, I was like, okay, I know this is an overseas call. I just, I immediately, picked, I thought I'll just talk, talk for like 20 seconds just to hear what he sounds like. So I just picked the phone and um, he, he answered the phone and <laughs> we didn't talk for too long because it's an overseas call. Um, and he wrote, he, he wrote, he, um, you know, I can't remember what we said on the phone. Do you? No. I, I can't remember. But I will say I probably said, oh, so that's what you sound like. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. to admit. That yeah. sounds like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, after we spoke for literally, like I said, it was just, a, it was less than a minute. It was just very quick. But after I hung up the phone, I thought, wow, I love his voice. I love his voice. I said the same too, because I have to admit that British voice he's got is pretty darn sexy. <laughs> oh, oh my God, I never knew you used to think that. I still think it now. You don't think my accent is sexy. Absolutely. You don't, don't believe that. You've never said, oh, you, your accent is sexy. You sometimes say I like your accent. Okay, well, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking sexy. Okay, well, anyway, yeah, she, so... She does have a great accent. So, thumbs up or however you do it on your YouTube thing. <laughs> leave a comment, say yes, whether or not she has a sexy voice or not. I, I'll leave a comment. It's mostly women. They're not going to say I have a sexy voice. Women don't say that to each other. <laughs> Sorry. But after that call, uh, we exchanged numbers. And the emails moved into phone calls. We talked for months on the phone. And I remember there was a couple of calls. I remember one in particular, I was lying in bed. We spoke all night and I was at home in, in London, uh, oh, close to Roman Road Market. That's where we actually had that phone call. Cause I remember that bedroom. The first time that we shared photos with each other. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to say. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, I forgot that bit. Okay, so because um, we were dying, we're like, okay, listen, we've well, been talking yeah. to each other for oh, on weeks. On email, let's just see what we. Yeah, we thought, well, let's just share pictures. Like, let's just send a picture of each other. So I sent him a picture of me, and I remember that picture. My hair, because normally my hair is very, very long, but I cut it because that was a, a relationship that had ended, and I just cut all my hair off. And I took that picture. Ironically, it was a picture of me um, at a nightclub in New York. <laughs> Anyway, so I sent him that picture of me. Um, when I saw the picture, I wasn't like, oh my God, he's so hot, holy crap. You know, it wasn't like that. But I was like, I just, I, like I saw the email, he opened, opened it, I saw the picture, I went, hmm, not bad, okay. I, was, I will say I was surprised. I mean, not to say surprised, cause you just have like a mental picture of like what someone's gonna look like yeah. after you've been talking with them for a while. But I didn't. Did you think I was black? No. No. You know what? I never asked him that question. I don't think I've ever asked you that question. But I didn't make an assumption either. Like, I didn't think one way or the other. Because I'm very open anyway with my, when I was dating back then with my relationships. Yeah. I kind of didn't date my own race. I kind of dated all around. Yeah, he says he's dated the, the world or the rainbow. I forget what you say, because he's dated all different nationalities. Pretty much every continent. When I got the picture of him, I, I just had a feeling he was white. I don't know. It's probably what he was writing. I've dated both black and white, by the way. Um, and I had a feeling that he was white, just from the conversation, what he was saying. I just, you know, you know, you build up a picture of what you think someone looks like. So yes, yeah, so the phone calls, like I said, we spoke all night. He called me in the evening, my time in, in London. He stayed on the phone after midnight, is my time, after midnight wee hours of the morning like four five we were still on the phone one single phone call we were still talking on the phone and i remember at one point i said to him oh my god we've spoken all night that's when i knew i really liked her because if i could sit on the phone like that and just chat with a good conversation yeah and not be bored and i felt like it was just we were learning so much about each other and i think that's when it started to get to the 
not romantic, but it was kind of like, no. okay, you know what? Like, this is a I need cool to, person. Yeah, I need this to meet a, her. I, I yeah. can't just like have these conversations. I need to meet her. Oh my God, this chair. Sorry. But yeah, I felt, I feel like the same way in that because we talk so much, I was starting to feel like, again, not a sort of romantic sense, but a sense of, wow, this is a really cool guy. Like, this is a cool guy. It'd be so cool if we actually met. We'd been talking to each other for so long and I felt that, I felt like I knew so much about him and the only thing was I hadn't met him. That's the stage that it got to. We both decided, we both agreed we should meet and um, I decided that I would come to New York because my best friend Lorraine at the time, she lived in Brooklyn so I thought I'll stay with her and I get to meet Michael at the same time. I uh, made the suggestion, since she had already said she was coming, that I would pick her up at the airport. Right, right. But I had to have a conference call with some friends because I thought, do I really let him pick me up? Like Lorraine was saying to me, you know, are you okay with him picking you up? If you know, if there's any problem, because I was saying to Lorraine, you know, he wants to pick me up at the airport. I don't know if that's a good idea because I've never met him before. His name is Mad Mike. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, he could like, I don't know, he could like kill me or something. You know, I don't know because I don't know who he is. Really, I've never met him and he's meeting me at the airport. So I'm really, technically, I'm meeting a stranger, aren't I? So, but he offered. So I asked Lorraine, I asked a couple, I remember I asked Anna, my cousin, you know, and everyone agreed. They said, look, Lorraine also, she said, look, if for any reason, look, here's my number. If he do, if he st stands you up, he's not going to be at the airport, whatever. Call my phone number. Just call me at the airport. I'll just come and pick you up. So I said, okay, cool. So that was my backup plan. So um, I I I went I went to JFK airport by myself, and um, Michael was going to be waiting for me. And you know when you go through those doors where it's you've just arrived off of a flight and you have all the visitors who's waiting to greet the people who've arrived off of their planes. I just saw a sea of faces and I was looking for him, looking for Michael. I didn't see him, did I? And I thought, oh my God. So I just had my suitcase on my wheels. I was like wheeling it behind me. And I was just, I came through. Nobody even came up to me. I thought, oh my God, the, the fucker stood me up. That's what I thought. I thought he's not here. I went into the, into the loo. So I went into the loo and I just stayed in there and I just looked in the mirror, I looked at myself and went, Karen, it's okay. It doesn't matter if you, if you didn't come, that's fine. I've got Lorraine's number, I'll call her, she'll pick me up, it's fine. So, got myself together, you know, mentally, and I got my suitcase, I opened the door to come out of the, you know, the, the loo, the restrooms, and the first person I saw was Michael, but he didn't see me. He was going like this, I was still looking for her. He was still doing this, looking for people. Mind you, I've never seen you before in person, so it was kind of working from a photograph. So I'm trying to, you know, through the sea of people, like, is that her? No. Is that her? No. I'm like, right. God, I hope she recognizes me because, quite frankly, I can't recognize her. So, yeah. So I, I he's doing this still, looking at the people, the arrivals, and I knew instantly that was him. I just recognized him. From the pictures so i knew that was him that so of course i get advantage right because i get to see him and just like looking him up and down before he sees me so so i was just looking at him going like this like looking at people and i'm like over there right so imagine that this is michael going like this and i'm over there like just looking at him going ah so that's what you look like in person a little bit shorter than i thought that didn't come across in the photos not bad okay okay so i i, I went i you know i just came up quietly behind him because he's still doing this looking at the arrivals I came up behind him and I whispered, who are you looking for? Actually, you put your hands over my eyes and you said, who are you, who are you looking, looking for? for? And that's when I turned And around. then we just turned and looked at each other like, oh my God, hi, Karen. Big hug, yeah. of course, yeah, we big just, hug. We just hugged each other like old friends because... Yeah, that was nice. It was, yeah, it was, there was no, um, what's the word, awkwardness right. to it or uncomfortable feeling. It was... It just felt right. It, it was just, it was just, yeah. Because I think because we had spoken for so long, so many hours on the phone and the emails, and I just felt like the last part was just to meet you. Because I right. felt like I already sort of, I already knew you at that point. Kind of felt the same. Yeah, because yeah. most people it's the reverse, isn't it? You meet someone first and then you get to know them. We did it the flip. The last part of the puzzle was just to see him physically in person. And that was it. And he drove me to Lorraine's place. And 
there was no awkward silences in the car. We talked the whole time going to the car. It's like a, it's like we picked up from where we last left off in our conversations, right. like on the phone or whatever. So we just continued from there. So that was it. That was literally. So that's that's how we met in a nutshell. Yes. And then after that, fast forward. I'm going to skip a lot of things, but he came to London a few months later. Uh, my mum was still living, she's in St. Lucia now, but at the time she was living, um, I was living at my mum's. And I remember the first time he met my mum. I remember the first time I met um, I took Michael to Rum and Every Road. Every man remembers the first time they meet. <laughs> 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 they better have some mum. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure the mum remembers too. I took him to Rum and Road Market. So there's a brilliant fish and chip shop. I don't know, if, I don't even know if it's there anymore. But I took him there to get a good portion of fish and chips, like traditional fish and chips. And we brought it home and um, we were sitting literally at the kitchen table eating. And the, I heard the key in the door and I knew it was my mum. And she walked in and she walked in seeing Michael sitting at the kitchen table, the two of us, eating a portion of fish and, ch fish and chips. I'm surprised I didn't get shot. Who's this white boy in my house? <laughs> <laughs> so that was how... Um, you know, they met, Michael and my mum met for the first time. Um, and then fast forward now, um, just to sort of summarise, Michael was going to Key West at the end of the year. He invited me to go with him because his friends were going, two friends. And I went and it was while we were in Key West that we had the chat. We had this conversation about um, what do we do? Like we could tell now that this, the relationship was more serious. It was, it was special and we wanted to see, continue being together. It was at the point. Got goosebumps. Just thinking about it. Oh my God! Look at your hair. <laughs> it has risen up. It really got the way you yeah, look. Because it made me think about it. Over the peg porcupine. You know when they're kind of scared, like yeah. their, their thorns like come porcupine. up. Porcupine. Yeah. Well, that's what your hair does. His hair just rose up. Oh. So. Um, Good memory. So we yeah we had that was a really nice place in Key West. So we had the conversation of who's going to move. Literally, that's how it was. Like. Does Michael go to London or do I come to New York? And after we decide, thought about it, I offered, I actually, I wanted to come to New York because I've always believed, and this is like something which is, ugh, I guess I'll put it in this video. Um, I've always thought that I would end up living in New York. Before I met Michael, it was when I was going to school. That's how long ago I thought I would end up living in New York. Cause you know, when you're growing up with your friends and maybe you sort of imagine what you're gonna be like when you're growing up. Oh, what do you think you do? Do you think you're gonna get married? Do you think you're gonna live in London? Do you think you're gonna live blah, blah, blah. I always used to say, I don't think I'm gonna be living in, in England. I'm gonna be living in New York. And that was when I was at school. And I didn't know why, by the way. I didn't know, had no idea why. There was nothing tangible. There was no proof. There was no reason for that. Cause I didn't know anyone in America, let alone in New York. But I just had a feeling somehow that I couldn't explain that I was going to end up living in New York. And my mum knows it because I've told her too. And if you ask her, to this day she knows that. Like I told her when I was, this is when I was back in school, I told her, I said, Mum, I think I'm going to end up living in New York one day. She goes, oh, okay. She just said it like that. She probably didn't believe me. But because I, I just, I just knew. So, yeah, so I offered to come and fast forward, I'm here. And we ended up getting married. Yep. <laughs> but um, that is the story of how we met. Best decision of my life, by the way. What? Oh my God, your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, oh my God, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that was it. That was, yes. that's our story. That's how we met. I must admit, when I first came to New York, I mean, it's, it's much, it's a lot better now, but I noticed that there weren't too many interracial couples. We were like a one-off, I felt. And um, say like, if we went to like a nightclub or anything or anywhere like, you know, stuff like that, um, like someone would come up to us, like say if we were standing in a club, we each had a drink in our hand. Like literally, a guy would come up to me. He would, he would not. This is true. Guys, usually black guys, they had no idea that we were a couple. Um, so he's standing there. I'm here, and uh, maybe they, our back. They literally just step right in between. They were, yeah, because they thought we weren't together, and they're just like, "Hey, so what's your name?" Blah blah blah. You know, just start chatting me up. This is assumed. This assumed 
that we were not together. Every once in a while we get that in the supermarket actually, they call them the groceries here, but not as much now, maybe because the local, they know us, they probably just know us by now, but what we used still to get- happens on occasion though. Yeah, yeah. We go to like a brand new shop, it, could, it can still happen. Whereby, you know when you get to the conveyor belt and you put your stuff on a conveyor belt and they're like swiping it, you know, to scan your stuff. Say like if Michael was in front, because one of you, you know, you're behind each other and you know, she's scanning the stuff. She'll look up and she'll go, together, separate. You know, like that, right? I've had them actually take the little piece and put it in between. Right, right. Because like, they just, just assume that... Because she'll start putting stuff up too. Yeah. And then they'll behind. just kind of like assume that they it's They assume like... that we're not together. And I just think little things like that reminds, reminds me of what we must look like right. to other people. Because we don't... I mean, I know you're white. And I know that sounds like weird. But I don't see that. Right. And I, and I think... I think people really see it from the outside looking at us. That's the first thing they must look at. And so then that proves that, I think. Yeah. And there was a guy, a young guy, he was doing the scanning, right? He looked like a student. And he did the same thing. He said, um, he was scanning, then he saw me behind Michael. And he goes, um, together? He was saying, he asked Michael that question. And I heard him, so I looked up and I said, yes, we are. Why did you ask that question? I just wanted to wind him up and his ears were bright red and you could see the blood was draining from his face like he looked so embarrassed and he was like um no I was just I just wasn't sure you know I just you know you just uh, 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 that's how he was speaking and I said don't worry I was just pulling your legs but overall people those are the reactions that we get they're very kind of like oh you're together or you know that kind of thing I think that's that's really it um, like I said before, I do see a lot more interracial couples now. I think that in London, the biggest difference between both London and New York is that there are way more interracial couples like us there in London, right, than there are here. Absolutely. Way, 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 I way more. I remember when we were walking around London. And, and you saw like them. Like Notting Hill and all these, all the places that we went to. Yeah. It was very, very mixed. It wasn't yeah. um, a lot more mixed than what I'm used to, obviously, because I'm from New Orleans. And being from New Orleans, a lot of people would think that because the population is majority black, that everybody commingles. Well, not really. I mean, but there's a lot of people in New Orleans that are very segregated and separated out. Um, and it's unfortunate. Still? You know? I'm I wouldn't say as much now, yeah. but definitely were, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was definitely more so then, then it was more so. Um, and it, I thought it was less, but it was being around you that brought it to my attention, you know, like yeah. brought it to my attention and I was aware of it then. Yeah, of how separate everyone because, is, everyone dates their own race. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I had never dated a black girl before, so I didn't know, like, how it would be perceived walking down the street in New Orleans, if not, if, if anybody would even notice. But yeah. I, when we did go to New Orleans, people did notice. Yeah, they did. And I thought that was kind of strange to me yeah you know because i do have friends who are black well, and, when, and it wasn't like anything it didn't seem like it was going to be anything out of the ordinary for me well what about at the crawfish boil oh, okay this, I'm, I'm gonna this is, this is, this this is a this great great this story is, this is nothing to do with like how we met but the same friends that we went to with michael yeah key west they lived at the time in new orleans this is before katrina happened and they threw a big crawfish boil in their backyard and everyone was white there. I was the only black person that walked in. This was in the Cajun territory. And um, so this is the South, the deep South. And here's me like this city girl Bayous. from London, black girl. And uh, so I was the only black person there. Fine, I've been in those situations before. It doesn't mean anything to me. Anyway, so everyone's like getting stuck in eating crawfish. And there was this older white woman standing next to me. I, I want to say she looked like she was about 80, 70, 80. And she was really nice, really sweet. And she was one of the friends. And you know, very Southern. And she was being very nice. So we're just standing next to each other and everyone's just eating outdoors. And she said, um, at one point when we were talking, she looked at me, she went, oh, if I knew you were gonna be here, I would have brought my black friend with me. Yeah. When you told me that story, I my see. jaw just dropped. I was like, no, she did not <laughs> just what, say that. That's what I thought. I thought, oh my God. And then don't forget, this is the city girl. 
Growing up in London, in a melting pot of different cultures, all used to that all day, every day. And to go from that and to get cut pasted into New Orleans, deep south, and to have a, 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 white, a white older lady say that to me, I thought was so weird. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't even know what I said. I must have muttered some sound that come out of my mouth. And, uh, but I knew that she didn't mean it as in being racist because it wasn't coming from a place of hate because you can tell when someone's being spiteful when that it's, it's, it's the meaning with, it's, there's hate behind it. Mm -hmm. And she was literally, it was like over her head, like she literally thought she was being nice when she said that. And um, I don't know, it was just, it was just hilarious. It was so fun. And honestly, you had to be there to understand that I honestly believe that she didn't mean it in a in any way a racist or a, a right. negative way. She was honestly being, to her, being friendly. And I have a lot of great friends in New Orleans and <laughs> it's it was definitely nothing. Yeah, so like yeah, so anyway. All right, so I'm gonna stop now, but I don't think there's anything else I wanna say, except that is how we met. Yes. Um, I thought I would throw this video in. I know it's very different. It's nothing to do with style and stuff like that, although this dress will be linked below. Just wanted to get that out there. My, my t-shirt's gonna be linked below as well. <laughs> is it? Let me just see who's it. Let me see. Oh, yeah. It was a no, but, oh, sorry. But no, I can though, because I know who that is. Sorry. All right, so that is the story of how Michael and I met. And we got married at City Hall. Right and, here in New York. And Daria, my friend, she took our photos. She was our photographer. Um, and a dress I wore cost $20. I'll insert a picture of it here so you can see. And the person standing on the steps in the background of that photo is my mum. Um, and then after we got married, we, it was nice. It was a beautiful hot day. I wore sandals. I had like a, a vintage metal bag on my side. I still have that bag and I still have that dress. And um, we went to Blue Water Grill in Union Square. And we had lunch yes. with my mum, my stepfather, uh, Daria and Daria's mum. And that was it. That was our wedding party. And then afterwards we went to the Union Square Market because it was open that day. I think it was a Wednesday we got married. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> and we just bought some veg, fruit and veg, and then we just went home, and that was it. We had no like big party, like reception, and we never even had a honeymoon. So there you go. But it just goes to show that you don't need all the bells and whistles anyway. You know, if the most important thing is the, the two of you. Yes. That's that's it. That's and the, and the close close family members. Close, I mean, yeah. Yeah. If my dad could have made it with his wife, we they certainly would have. Yeah. They, they're in uh, Florida, Clearwater, Florida. They couldn't be there. But, um, yeah, I think that is that is really it. I can't think of anything else that I want to say. Is there anything else that you want to say? What's the most important thing about a relationship? What do you think? Communication. You No matter what, just always communicate. Whether it's bad, good, you know, don't, don't hold anything back and think, oh, you know what, I'm not going to say anything. Um, you're better off just talking about anything and everything because if you hold anything back, then it just leads to resentment. Yeah, it eats you. Yeah, it's it's not good. And you know, one of the things I've always said to Karen is that I'll never go to bed angry. I'll never go to bed mad or upset yeah. or anything like that. I'll, I'll sit down and just have a conversation with her and and just talk it out. And even if we don't agree, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just don't we agree go. agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. don't go to bed upset. Yeah. Um, we still, to this day, and I still can't believe that I met Michael the way I did. And I honestly, no lie, I still, it catches me every now and again. Like, God, we, we met in such a weird way. Because it was so random. Um, we didn't know what we, what we looked like, like I said. And, you know, he could have been... Eight, he could have been 80, he could have been black, white, purple, green. That's a very good point. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? I, I See, it's the, it's the internet. You don't know who, I don't know who I'm talking to. You know, so I could have got catfished. You know, you don't know who you're talking to. You could have been a girl. You could have been a girl. Yeah. Yeah, or, or I could have been a girl. You could have been a guy. Exactly. Oh, shit. Can you imagine? No. It? And then we met. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, shit. I know. I, know. I, don't even, I don't even want to try and imagine. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's too much no, work no, to no, think no, about. No, no, no. But yeah, so I'm that just, is. I'm just glad that who I met was. You. Who, who? Yeah, you got what you what it said on the tin. <laughs> 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 yeah, we still 
feel like that. Yes. Um, I don't want to speak too much for him, but um, I, I call him my angel. Mm -hmm. I obviously feel like he is an, an angel that was... I believe in stuff like that. I believe that he was placed into my life. Um, and I feel the same. And I, I, strongly, yeah. I strongly feel the same. I do. It, it's definitely do. meant to be. I couldn't have... Um, Not to sound cliche. Yeah. But it is cliche I believe in the like. universe. I believe in manifestation. I believe in everything happens for a reason. The good as well as the bad. Mm -hmm. um, and we all have a path or paths mm -hmm. in our lives and yeah. you don't see it until that moment has passed and you look back and you go oh if I hadn't done that I wouldn't have met so-and-so if I hadn't broken up with so-and-so I wouldn't have done that and then done that so I believe that there are like stepping stones yeah. and we all have them in our life so I'm a, I completely believe that the angels did good giving me this one so it's not even Valentine's and I'm putting this, this YouTube out, but so what? I, would, I wouldn't want to put this out during Valentine's. We don't celebrate Valentine's, by no. the way. We hate it. We did in the beginning. We did in the beginning because I, I, I have to just thought, we did not? in the beginning. But, and I guess oh. that's because you're so conditioned to do it. But then we realized, like... It's crap. It sorry. Is. I'm sorry. It's just like... It's yeah, just... not to spoil anybody's oh. parades, you watch, some people. You do. watch next year, we're going to get a campaign to do something for Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do it. <laughs> but, you know, I will say... I make cards for her. I don't go to the store and buy a card. Um, I'll cook dinner yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. we'll do we'll do something special, but we don't. And yes. it's not yes. even on Valentine's he, Day. I was gonna times. say he does it anytime. He he surprises me with flowers that I don't expect. They're just random. I don't know when they're coming. That's the whole point, though. But you know, he's just uh, I don't know. I did good. I did good. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Um, that is it. That is the story of how Michael and I met. And uh, if you're new to my channel, I don't normally do videos like this. My channel is actually about the stuff that's behind me, which is, <laughs> which is fashion. Um, but I just, you know, it's a question I've been asked a lot because Michael appears on my YouTube channel every now and again, whether it's cooking, whether it's just the vlogs, he appears on my Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram on the screen here. He appears a lot on my stories, so if you want to see more of me or and Michael, you can check me out on Instagram and you'll see him in my stories a lot of the time. And everyone always likes when Michael comes on in the stories. I get the most DMs whenever you appear in my stories. Anyway, so... Because I'm not sure why. <laughs> But, but it's, it's cool, I guess. Um, but anyway, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. I know it's really unusual. It's a very unusual video. But um, stay safe. Stay in. Yes. All right? Look after yourselves. Have a good weekend, as I always say. Um, I do videos every single Friday, so subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another one. And between now and next Friday, I will talk to you on Instagram. And that is it. Leave me a comment below of how you met. If you are with somebody, I mean, you don't have to be. Everyone, I, I, hey, I've enjoyed my single life and so has Michael. So if you're not in, with anyone, that's fine. But if you are, I'd love to hear. I'm curious to know your stories. Maybe it's something really yeah. hilarious. Maybe it's an ex. Maybe you have a curious story of how you met your ex. Anyway, there you go. Now get off this stupid creaking chair because you just want to stop creaking. This is why, see, this is why I don't sit when I do videos. I like to stand. I like to stand when I do my videos because sitting, it's just, it's just, oh, how do people do this? I it's, know. I just can't, I can't. I'm, I'm actually just, tired of sitting. Right. Anyway, I'm going to go. Rum and coke? We're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. So I'm glad you did that. You really are. I appreciate it. Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh. Thank you. I know that I've asked you before.